Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm the GQ Jedi. If you're not already subscribed to me, blast that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any valuable Star Wars content. Now, as you guys know, Kenner made a handful of Hoth playsets for the Star Wars action figure line, and today we're going to be discussing the Rebel Command Center, otherwise known as Echo Base. The Rebel Command Center Adventure Set is the true Echo Base locale of the Kenner Star Wars toy line. Everything else put out by Kenner was a snowy Hoth exterior location, but not the Rebel Command Center. This was the Hoth interior place that we were all looking for. Well, whether we were or we weren't looking, it doesn't really matter because this is the only place that we got for Echo Base. Released by Kenner in 1981 as a Sears department store exclusive, the Rebel Command Center was the fourth place set to come out featuring Hoth from The Empire Strikes Back. One thing to note, is that on the box itself, Kenner messed up on the figure's weapons. They gave the ADAT commander Luke's rifle, and they gave Luke the commander's Bespin blaster. Oops. The style of this playset is like its predecessors in that it's very simple in its design. The base, as we have seen in two previous Kenner playsets, the Land of the Jawas and the Hoth Ice Planet Adventure set was once again utilized for the Rebel Command Center. I've actually done videos on all of these playsets, so I'll leave a link in the description down below. This playset reuses the familiar white craggy plastic base as its ground display for Echo Base. And we know this is Echo Base because the cardboard backdrop has a great drawing of the shield doors leading into the Echo Base hangar bay which is seen in the Empire Strikes Back. Did a lot of detail, very nice color. Um, the hangar inside actually has the Millennium Falcon. Um, Kenner's also included some Rebel Snow Speeders. Uh, there's a couple X-Wings, and they even included a transport. And on the right, they threw in a Rebel, which is riding a Tauntaun. And one might think that this is Luke Skywalker, but I don't really see a lightsaber drawn on the rider's belt. What do you guys think? Drop a comment down below. I just think that since the drawing also has Han and Leia running towards the Falcon in the background, Kenner wouldn't have drawn Luke riding his Tauntaun in the same moment. Again, I could be wrong. Kenner actually managed to recreate this exact moment from Empire Strikes Back inside the hangar bay on their cardboard backdrop, which is awesome. Again, I don't think it's Luke, and I'll tell you why. Kenner included three action figures with this playset. Kids got the ADAT Commander, Sensor Scope R2-D2, and Hoth Luke Skywalker. So drawing Luke on the backdrop and including him as an actual action figure with the playset itself just doesn't make much sense. By now, Kenner had made their mark in the toy community and they'd continue to be a rock star breaking new ground. However, they occasionally recycled old ideas to create playsets and packaged figures along with them to help drive sales on both fronts. After all, action figures need playsets to play on and playsets need action figures to display. The enticement of getting three new action figures with your Hoth playset seemed to be the tipping point which got these fairly simple playsets off the shelves and into kids' playtime. Again, this is a very simple playset. It just has this awesome looking 80s cardboard backdrop and this white plastic base and three figures. That's it. So without the figures, all you have is this piece of plastic and this piece of cardboard. Plastic base, cardboard backdrop. But did we look at it like that when we were kids? Not really. Having a place to display your action figures was key, and it helped transport you back to the movie so you could join your friends on Hoth. The base allowed for several action figures to be displayed on it. And of course, it comes with the familiar cave and that action lever that pops a figure up into the air should you allow that in your Echo Base. Poor R2. But that's up to you, because this is that base, and that is its sole play feature. Personally, I would have liked to have had this part of Echo Base in the playset somehow, but seeing as no real action took place there, I can see why Kenner opted to give us the hangar bay. Quite a handful of moments with emotion and action took place there, so, you know, that choice makes absolute sense. I think if we could have gotten a bigger playset that was either longer on both sides of the base, or if even somehow the whole thing was just bigger, some of taller I think that would have maybe helped make up for the lack of the playability in this playset 
because like I said, it's just a cardboard backdrop on a plastic base with that action lever. That's all we got. And even though a lot of things happened down on Echo Base, and I would have liked to have gotten more of Echo Base in this playset, um, seen more of Echo Base itself, I still think Kenner did a good job with using just a piece of plastic and a cardboard backdrop to capture the essence of Echo Base. And like I said, better love it because this is the only Kenner Echo Base playset we are ever getting. Appreciate you guys tuning in today and if you enjoyed the video please share it and give that like button a thumbs up because it greatly helps out the channel and if you've not done so blast that subscribe button and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss any valuable Star Wars content and remember collect or collect not there is no try.